Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's only going to be. Yeah. Need a hand with his lines either. So the last footage of us. <laughs> Ever. Before he ever on the Discovery Let's Channel. Hope not. What happened to Ruby Rose? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> or Bo? Question mark. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's more realistic. Have uh, a great journey. I like yeah. Bo. You can. I can tell you're so sad you're not going. <laughs> I'm pretty upset. I'm getting on an airplane. <laughs> to go to a wedding. <laughs> have fun with your friends. Uh, Set a nice hotel. Dry wedding though, yeah. Dry possibly. What? Oh, it's time to go, it? my love. It's time to go. I think it's time to go. All right. We've got about 20 minutes of work to do, and then we need to get out of here. Yeah, we what, do. What do you have to finish up? I just want to make sure that I'm not missing something. Just get, get the sails out. That sort of thing. Start the engine, do some checks. Sails, you plan to use them? Uh, yeah, all the way. Okay. It's new for us. We'll, Us we'll too. Oh, the dusty, plan, full of spiders. <laughs> my sail plan, actually, I think it's going to be downwind enough that I'm not even going to use the mizzen. I'm going to go Nightingale Tune style. What? And I'm just going to go reef, single reef in the main, and then play with the Jenny and see how it goes. All right, <laughs> All right Nick's, Nick's itching to get going. Yeah, All right. Let's go before it's the wind pipes up. And I, I, don't think, I never said this, meant this more. Stay in touch, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you on the road. I'll see you in Yep. Okay. Alright, bye. Alright, we'll chat, you. chat on the radio on a regular basis. Yeah, on on you too, Sarah Lynn. We'll see you in Turks. I'll see you later. So nice to meet you with Desert Time. You too. You guys awesome. are so lovely. I wish we had met you much sooner. Us too. I mean, we've just been kind of crazy busy. Yeah. Over the last we were few just months, on it. But in a totally different headspace this year than yeah. last, so yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, but, but please come back and visit us. I think we're gonna have to. Yeah, I really think that we're gonna have to because it's just too amazing what happened last. I yeah, think we've already talked about coming back next year. <laughs> Not finally, we've had a, a really freaking awesome time in San Juan. Puerto Rico was somewhere we didn't know much about. We heard loads of really awesome stories about the food and the people and how kind everyone was going to be. So after what, three weeks in Puerto Rico, um, we're finally leaving San Juan for Turks. And I think we're a delay of about a month. We're a month behind schedule. But I think that I feel a little bit aggrieved for no particular reason that so hurricane season comes upon us and we have to move. Um, or be stuck somewhere for seven or eight months and we can't stay here because of our visa situation. But I'd love to stay here longer. Our friends Lauren and Brian have just decided to stay here and get a house. Um, which, because they're American, they can do that. So sad to leave, excited for Turks and Caicos, and you know, we've got three days on the water, which we haven't had for a while. We haven't done this much sailing at this length for a couple of years, 18 months since we crossed the Atlantic. So that's it, babe. What do you have to say? Let me film you. Well, I think that, I don't know, I think that it's, favorite place so far maybe that's a big that's a big plus i know Although, that's a big statement what i would say is that every place or most places have been your favorite place so far i know i'm very thankful like that so we're about two hours out of san juan uh actually i can tell exactly how far we are we've gone 16.9 miles so probably about two and a half hours and Hey, things are good so far. We've got a speed, an average speed of 6.2 knots, which is pretty good. Um, the wind's just off the starboard quarter, and it's kind of anywhere between 11 and 14 knots, so pretty uh, light winds. So we're flying with our Code Zero at the moment, um, and our mainsail. I'm not quite sure we're gonna continue with that arrangement I think that the winds are a bit too strong for the code zero to be honest it's kind of overpowering the boat um, 
the self steer, the hydrovane we had out working with the jib and main and um, it was happy and then as soon as we put the code zero up it just wouldn't it wouldn't steer to the wind the hydrovane needs a, a well balanced boat it needs the sails to be set properly and uh, as soon as the boat's unbalanced then it won't it won't really work and that's what we found so um yeah at the moment it's probably I don't know, not the ideal sailing setup, not the ideal sail plan for these conditions. I think ideally we'd have the parasailer up, but you know, there's a lot of work that goes with that and uh, we're not quite sure whether we want to commit to that just yet. What can I do, Nick? Should I come and help? Yeah. Engine in neutral. It already is. Put the engine on. Yeah. Get, get, get the boat moving again. Okay. Fucking hell. What was I just saying? Do you know what? I'm pissed off because I could see that happening. I could see that happening. No, it's not I told you so. I just was not feeling, you know, we were both looking at that sail going, I'm not happy, and we didn't do anything about it because we wanted to go fast. This is a lesson for us. It looks like our um, spinning a halyard chaffed through. I don't know on what. I'm going to have to ask Mick when he comes back to the cockpit. Me. Yeah, we shifted the spinnaker halyard. How did we do that? My only thoughts are that um, because we're sailing the code zero and more downwind, there's a lot more motion, like yawing motion of the, of the halyard yeah. against the. Um, we shifted to it exactly the same place as the last one did. I thought that we didn't. Oh. Anyway, I used the other halyard, not the one for the parasail, the other halyard. Yeah. So, yeah, but, you know, the halyard's still usable. All we have to do is just rerunning it's going to be a fuck. Yeah. yeah so that's always a fun job full of swearing. And there's a small tear in it, but we've got, we've got repair tape. But it's about like that big, yeah. two, inch tear, two inch tear. But it means we can't fly it. Well, that's fine. Yeah, well, luckily we saved the sail. We've got a, we, we, so we can still reuse the halyard. Let's just put it back through and then run a mousing line with nuts and bolts on it. Yeah. And that's the second thing. And the third thing, which is good news, is that we didn't get the sail around the prop or the rudder, which would have been a fuck. And involve one of us when that see one of us that would be me getting into the water with a knife. Anyway, we were thinking about talking about taking that sail down, <laughs> but just not in such dramatic fashion. Tell me if I got it wrong, but you don't want to be alone. getting late got it all babe save arms when you're ready i'm here when you need me i'm yours so it's uh, just coming up to five o'clock and um yeah apart from our code zero cooling in the water and our spinning halyard chucking through it's been a pretty uneventful day we haven't caught any fish i think that there must be something wrong with us how can we not have caught a fish all day so someone who worked at the marina um, stopped to chat to Nick about the hydrovane and um, he talked about our fishing stuff and presumably he's got 
you know quite a bit of knowledge about fishing and we showed him his uh, we showed him our lure and we showed him we talked to him about how we troll the line and he said that we're doing everything absolutely by the book and that the lure is really good you know and he said I don't know why we've not caught any fish yet <laughs> and we said yeah neither do we yeah the conditions are nice um, the winds still around 12 knots uh, just coming from the Saba quarter again and we're making pretty good time um, we've kind of been averaging 6.3 knots today uh, over the last 50 miles so that's pretty good uh, Nick and I kind of planned the passage on an average of six knots and we thought that, that might be kind of best case scenario um, so 6.3 is good for the moment I think that from experience it always takes a few days to get into the swing of things um, the first day and probably two days are always a bit I don't know you kind of don't know what to do with yourself you here, you're there, you're up, you're down, you don't really, you're not really comfortable, you don't really know, you can't really settle into it, I think it takes a couple of days to settle into it, um, that's how I felt doing the Atlantic and then, yeah, I think that by the time we get settled into the routine then we'll be at Turks and Caicos, so, you know, yeah. sun's just come up, well it's just coming up now and uh, it's 6 o'clock in the morning and we've just finished our first night sail um, so we're coming up for 22 hours, no, 21 hours um, we've done 140 miles um, at an average of 6.6 .6 knots so that's pretty good for us very uneventful evening, God um, not much to report overnight. Didn't see anyone apart from Bo. There's a cargo ship over there right now, so they're about five miles away. Yeah, it's a nice morning. I got some decent sleep last night. Nick, I think, got some sleep. He's just gone back to bed. I hope he sleeps a bit more. All good. It's nice to be on the water really nice. So it's um, Friday, Friday lunchtime. No, but I'm just looking for the camera. And uh, we've covered 180 nautical miles. Um, we're flying along. There must be a really strong current here because this boat doesn't go this fast. Average 6.7 knots, which is uh, crazy fast. And if you just take a quick squiz over there, there's our buddy boat. So that's sailing vessel sailor, beautiful catch. And uh, yeah, he's looking good actually. So in about 10 miles, we run out of chart. There's a gap between the two charts. And it looks like we're just sailing off the edge of the ocean. after six o'clock. Um, this is our third day at sea and um, according to our chart plotter we're going to arrive at about midnight tonight so we're going pretty fast at the moment. 
We're hitting about seven knots. Ooh, eight knots. Eight, seven. Hello. Yeah, that's kind of fast. So yeah, I don't, well, I don't know if we're going to maintain this speed or probably not. We'll probably slow down a little bit, so it might be early hours in the morning that we arrive, which um, obviously presents, presents a bit of a conundrum because, you know, what are we going to do with ourselves? I'm not quite sure whether we're going to try and anchor somewhere or whether we're going to slow down and try and get there in daylight or I'm not quite sure what the plan is. Good morning. So, we did some offshore sailing. Uh, we left San Juan Thursday morning about 8 o'clock and 9 a.m. And we were offshore for three days. So, the wind and the current were, were stronger than we thought they were going to be. So we got in a little, we got about 10 hours earlier. So we did uh, average 6.6 .6 knots, which is good for a 38 foot boat. Um, flew along. We got in at 1 a.m. this morning, which meant negotiating this the reef to get to uh, a safe anchorage so we could get some sleep, which in um, our experience of anchorages at night is almost a bit fraught. Anyway, we pulled into an anchorage which must be a half a kilometre wide, so half, and there's us, our friend's boat, and one other super yacht. So we didn't really have any uh, any concerns about the, uh, the the space, but it looks very flat, looks very beautiful. Um, we went straight to sleep, kind of put the courtesy flag up, anchored, and slept. And then today we are going to hopefully treat ourselves to a little marina. We're going to go in and uh, do some washing, get the boat straight. We're already starting to get the boat straight. And yeah, we're going to wait for the tide. Apparently we're back to tidal calculations just to avoid um, getting swept up and down um, in through the cuts, through the small passages. So it's good. Anything to add, my love, after three days offshore? Waffles to breakfast. Lovely waffles is what I'm having. You can have boring cereal. Uh, I missed the cornflake chicken already. <laughs> this is my reward. Three days at sea. <laughs> <laughs> I did not mean that. <laughs> look at this Dickensian bowl of gruel. <laughs> I have. And look at this festival of beauty. Hey, I offered. I don't like waffles. Things I don't like. Waffles. Chocolate cake. Break. Windy. It is windy actually. And it's the morning wings. So for members of the OCD club that um, find things out of place annoying, I didn't put those on last night. We were just kids in love. I gave you the best of me. And all I was asking of you was to never break it. They're just so playful and magical. They're just amazing. It never, ever, ever gets old. What a fantastic welcome to Turks and Caicos. 
Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching this week's episode. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, leave your comments down below as per usual. We love reading them, we love replying to them, we love interacting with you guys. So we love the comments, keep them coming. Give us a thumbs up if you like the episode and if you like us, then subscribe here. Join us on Facebook right here and we'll see you next week when we are exploring the Bahamas. Can't wait.